Welcome back to this Let's Play of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2. Last time, we uh, ran into some droids in this uh, abandoned military base, where we're hoping to find some sort of uh, way to get to the polar regions, where we suspect, but don't know, that uh, the Ebon Hawk is hidden. This is one of the areas that I know was incomplete from the first game, so this is an interesting area from the standpoint of, I don't know 100% what I'm going to find here. So it's a little bit playing blind, but I kind of have some guesses about what might happen. The enemies here are not pushovers, unfortunately. Uh, in fact, my main character got uh, splatted when I uh, was trying to fight them earlier. Because, well, they uh, do a lot of damage and there's not really a lot of way to protect from them because they use disruptor type weapons that go through shields and also through... Um, my uh, energy resistance power. However, um, I do have one sort of trump against them, which is this destroyed droid power. Unfortunately, they tend to make their saves fairly often, so it, the stun part of it, which is really what I want out of more so than the damage, um, is unreliable at best. As you can see, Beodor got kind of splattered there. But, um, picking up bunch of random items that, well, I don't know. That war bowcaster is actually a better weapon than uh, Beodor is using. I don't know. I mean, it does energy damage as opposed to the disruptor rifle. Eh, I'll just take, I'll just leave him with the disruptor rifle. What is it? What's going on? And honestly, it's, he, since he has a very high strength, he's actually usually better off using a melee weapon. This area, um, like some of the areas before, though, some of the enemies here are stationary, so having a ranged weapon is sometimes rather useful from the standpoint of if they can't get to you, they uh, can't hit you. I hear you. Yeah? And there's some turrets here, and there's another set of military droids. And again, they're making their saves, which is annoying, but, you know, I guess they have that one. The turrets, on the other hand, are consistently failing their saves. And even though I have sort of high light side affinity, I am running out of force points fairly quickly, unfortunately. But at least the guts get me through part of it. Since these things have shields, I'm just going to switch to a melee weapon that goes right through shields. Alright. And there's both a workbench and... Ah, dang it. Stupid poison vents. Uh, and a... Both kinds of workbench in this room. So I'm going to see what I can do with the workbench now that I have you know, a little more skill. Not all that much, unfortunately. We can uh, put some stuff into the disruptor, disruptor rifle that uh, Beodor is using and make it a little more effective, at least. I also moved a couple of the uh, items that I had just lying around into this Sith War Sword, which I picked up, which is a dual-bladed weapon. Uh, dual-bladed weapons work exactly like... Yes, um, what's going on? work exactly like having an offhand, a balanced offhand weapon. So, hey, there's a shuttle here. There she is, one orbital shuttle. Looks like it's in serviceable condition. That's all the moot point, though. Okay, um, well, is serviceable not good enough? The hangar bay doors are closed. I don't fancy flying the shuttle through solid metal, so I'd say we need to find a way to get them open. We'll also need to find the ignition codes for the shuttle, or else we'll have some trouble getting off the ground. If we get all that, I wouldn't worry about what shape this heap is in. I'll get it running. Okay, easy enough. Now, that's a big door. I wonder what's behind that door. And it's telling you, essentially, that you can try and board the shuttle, but nothing's gonna happen, so go away. I don't know why they included the script there, so that that works even before you... Great. Yes. Let's go. Now, I don't know if Bader's gonna be able to... Oh, he can still pick it. 
and we can try and unlock the hangar doors, but it doesn't work because the power's off. Well, okay, then I guess we're going to have to find a way to turn the power back on. Here's the force field. And there's a bunch of lockers in here. Let's see what they have. Yay, garbage. Security control might have something useful. Sith power gauntlets. I wonder what those are. Yeah, plus three strength. Not bad. Compared to... I also have this Ariadu strength amplifier. The, the difference between a plus two strength item and a plus three strength item is fairly minimal, because uh, as with any D20 system, odd stats don't actually do anything for you. So... Uh, um, if I ever have any problems with picking locks, I can still just switch at and in. Um, we also picked up this Achani light armor, which is actually exactly like the uh, armor that my main character is wearing, except it gives some fire resist, so why not? Security control here. We can turn off the stupid gas vents. It's sort of... They were more of an annoyance than an actual threat, but hey, you know, better than yes. having to deal yeah. with them all the time. I have a feeling there's going to be something down here, so... Yep. Just the one, though. There's a couple more dead Zerka guys around here. That electrical capacitance thing essentially gives a... not total immunity, but partial immunity to electric damage. I can't think of any enemies that actually use electric damage in this game. Even the, the Dark Side Jedi don't really use Force Lightning that much. Alright. Now that these things are we can just walk right over them because there's no any more. He's a Zerka guy who's asking if I'm part of a rescue team, and I'm not really. Yeah, he hit here. And hasn't been able to reach anyone, and uh, we can help him find his way out. But we're gonna have to deal with this military military droid down here first. So. Take him down. Unfortunately, the, uh, our anti-droid power is not working that well. Looks like the uh, fields are keeping the other ones there um, away. This guy can actually be kind of a pain to lead because he's not very smart. He uh, has a tendency to get caught on things. And uh, I may actually decide to try and rescue him off screen. You just get some light, light side points for doing it. It's not like he's a big deal. This set of boxes here causes problems for him. I don't know really why they decided to increase, put a, an obstacle field there just for his purposes, but talking to him doesn't help. I'm just going to do this off screen. It's just too much of a hassle. The things I do for light side points, I've just been hurting him. He says he'll wait here and you get some light side points. Great. Anyway, um, the key to making him follow you if he's being stupid is essentially to, um, yes. if you walk towards him, he will start following you again. Uh, and so we just, if he doesn't work, just walk back towards him. He kind of has a tendency to get stuck on things, and honestly, maybe it's not worth it to try and get that, but okay. I'm keeping an eye out on the doors here because, again, I don't know what's actually going to work. This area may be a little different than I expect. Obviously, there's a bunch more droids back on the other side here, so we'll have to see what uh, what we can do with those. Anyway, 
Um, we're basically out of time for this video, so I'll pick up next time when we punch through this force field, literally, and uh, go and beat on more droids. Hey, at least we're not having six episodes in a row with no combat.